why. Do you ever find yourself so bored that watching television or traffic seems interesting? Well, look, lose the attitude, okay? Check this out. Welcome. I'm your host, Bioman Bob. Today, we'll be getting a general overview of Earth's biomes. There's two major categories, terrestrial biomes and aquatic biomes. Tropical wet rainforests, also known as tropical rainforests, are located around the equator. This provides a climate of 68 degrees Fahrenheit through 93 degrees Fahrenheit. Because of this geographical location, there is a lack of seasonal change. This allows the plants to grow throughout the year. The trees are evergreen due to the lack of seasonal shift, and animals range from tigers to insects. Savannas. Picture the Lion King. Vast grassy plains with trees scattered here and there. Temperatures typically average around 75 degrees Fahrenheit through 84 degrees Fahrenheit. Savannas can be found in Africa, South America, and Northern Australia. Plants evolved root systems that re-sprout quickly due to fires. Subtropical deserts. This biome is centered on the tropics of Cancer and Capricorn. The climate ranges from a staggering daytime temp of 140 degrees Fahrenheit to a chilly 32 degrees Fahrenheit at night. These radical temperature fluctuations keep vegetation and animal diversity low. Examples of living organisms that are found in this biome are cacti and lizards. Chaparral also known as scrub forests, are located in California along the Mediterranean Sea and following the southern coast of Australia. Summers are dry as most rain comes during the winter. Fires provide needed nutrients such as nitrogen, adding to plant growth. Shrubs dominate plant population. Animals such as rabbits and coyotes can be found in this biome as well. Temperate grasslands known as grasslands throughout North America and steeps in Eurasia. During the spring, fall, and summer, the climates are warm enough for plants to thrive. The American bison used to roam this land before massive slaughter. Grasslands, if not controlled by burning, can be converted to thick forests. Temperate forests, these can be found Eastern North America, Western Europe, Eastern Asia, Chile, and New Zealand. The climate ranges from below freezing, negative 22 degrees Fahrenheit, to a moderate 86 degrees Fahrenheit. The Cygenus trees are the dominant plant of this forest biome. Leaves that cover the floor of this biome are used for inhabitants, for roly polies and red, black, and salamanders. Boreal forests, located to the south of the Arctic Circle and across most northern nations. Because of this location, there are long winters and short summers, making for majority of plants to be cold-tolerant, cone-bearing plants. Conciferous trees are dominant here. Bears, wolves, and owls can also be found living here. I like to think of this as the Twilight Zone, like the movie Twilight. Even north of the boreal forest, throughout the Arctic regions, is the Arctic tundra biome. During the winter, temperatures average from a negative 34 degrees Fahrenheit. During the summer, averages in the mid 40s. The growing season for plants is around 11 weeks long, in which there's almost 24 hours of consistent daylight. When the soil is in permafrost conditions, the ground can be covered with lichens or plants. Ocean, defined in the text as, quote, a continuous body of salt that is relatively uniform in chemical composition. It is a weak solution of minerals, salts, and decayed biological matter. End quote. This is the largest marine biome and is split up into the following zones. 
in which unique species have adapted to live in these specific areas. Coral reefs. This marine biome is constructed by invertebrates living on warm, shallow ridges within 30 degrees north and south of the equator. To be able to live, these corals have a mutualistic relationship with the photosynthetic algae. However, there's a recent struggle of survival because of increased global temperature that makes water unsuitable, causing such corals to bleach. 4,000 fish species live in this biome along with seaweed and algae. Estuaries. Estuaries. The final of the marine biome because this is where the fresh water and the ocean meet. Salt and fresh water mix, creating location where young crustaceans, mollusks, and fish begin their lives. Many plants are halopoids, those that can manage salty conditions. Animals and plants constantly have to adapt for the amount of salt that is being blended from the ocean tides. This is a freshwater biome that ranges from a couple feet to miles long. Sunlight can penetrate through water to reach plankton that provide photosynthesis and the base of an underwater food web. If there's an excess of nitrogen from sewage and fertilizer runoff, algae will cover the tops of lakes, cutting off photosynthesis, eventually creating dead zones. Rivers and streams, flowing water. The following water biome carries large amounts of water from the source to a lake or ocean. Source water is cold, clear, and has a narrow channel, resulting in a fast current. Living in these fast currents are photosynthetic algae and leeches that have adapted to rushing conditions. Once the channel broadens, warms, and slows, the water becomes less clear and worms and insects can be found in the mud. Wetlands are the final freshwater biome. In fact, this is the last biome we'll be going over. So what are we talking about? We're talking about wet lands. This biome's soil is saturated in shallow water. The plants are emergent vegetation due to the roots planted in the soil but long enough for the leaves to rise above the water. Marshes, swamps, bugs, mud flats, and salt marshes all share three key things. Hydrology, hydrific vegetation, and hydric soils. Cypress trees and alligators can be found amongst the murky water. Ooh. Imagine any Duck Dynasty episode. In that short amount of time, we traveled around the world. Tune in. Tune in.